I don't no. think I was. Sure. Okay, well, we're yes, recording. People, no, I am. Last All right. Chapter. Good morning, everyone. Let's look at this. I knocked well, it off early. There I go. We will get started. It's good to see everybody this morning. Uh, first order of business are yeah, like minutes from May, August, and September <laughs> of 2022, and January of 23, and March of 23. Uh, <sighs> We did not have a meeting last month, and for those of you who weren't here, the city's policy uh, has been established that if there's not a quorum, there's not a meeting. So uh, we had no, we did not have a quorum, so we did not have a meeting. I have no information taken. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, Michael. Motion to approve all of the minutes. All of the minutes. Second. And, and there's a second. Thank you, Tim. So, remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah, some of it was, kind of. Um, any discussion? If not, all in favor of accepting the minutes as presented from those five meetings, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Uh, new business would be uh, Selesky Wheels Park. Staff report. I give a quick update on Sandusky Wheels Park. So we're still in that 50% design process and we are expecting to have a public meeting coming up on site to look at the draft concepts. So if you haven't seen them, there is a web page built for this. It's cityofsandusky.com slash wheels park. And that is the current concept for the new all wheels park. And the we expect that public meeting to be June 15th, but don't pen that in yet, um, and I'm going to get a flyer out here probably tomorrow, so you'll see that on the city social media of um, that on-site meeting to discuss the concept and, ref and refine it more. And then we'll move into, we hope, a design build process, which I'm going to be working with Public Works to refine what that looks like and what that timeline is. I can give you an update next meeting. All right. Thank you. Any questions for Aaron? Seeing none, we'll move on to Amba Sprawl Park. Yes, sir, Mr. Uh, Chairman. So I wanted to bring this up in relation to the Mills High Rate Treatment Project that we're doing. I don't know if anybody's seen it. We did relocate the two ball fields that were previously within Sprawl Park, just north of the playground uh, that were bound kind of between the uh, wastewater treatment plant and the playground itself. There was one field that had kind of grown over. We hadn't used it as much as, as we had previously. It was still being used occasionally for T-ball, um, but we relocated those two fields to the former AMVETS where there was one field that AMVETS operated. And those two fields, our goal as part of the high rate treatment project was to use that area for our lay down and, and equipment and uh, material storage for the project. So we needed those fields, so we had to build two new fields and our goal was to get those fields constructed before the league. Uh, those fields are constructed. We still have a couple other minor items to do. Um, for example, we need to put uh, the padding on the backstop um, other than that, they're going to be played on as they are sitting this year. We understand that the outfield is not in perfect shape. It still has the former ball field out there. Uh, you can see a little elevation change. We're, we're trying to handle those issues and, and take care of those things in-house. But uh, being that we have money over the 23 and 24 calendar budget years, we're going to be implementing uh, other features as well. Uh, one other thing that we are working at is looking at putting a playground in. Now, as part of the project, we were forced to remove the playground, but working with the parks department, they wanted to, to replace it. It was not safe anymore, so we couldn't install the old playground. So they're looking at purchasing a brand new playground, and we will be installing that sometime this summer once it comes in. So there are other features we're going to be adding throughout the years, but I just wanted everybody to be aware that the ball fields are ready for the league. 
Are, is the playground going to go back in Sproul Park or over at the Antha side? Uh, neither. Okay. So there's a grass area that's right in front of Peerless Stove that uh, was previously leased to Peerless. It's no longer leased uh, in their lease. Um, so we'll be looking at putting it in there. And, and the main reason that that location was selected is because Sprow and Amvets have always been two uh, separate, very separated fields. When children needed to get from one to the other, for example, if they were playing at Erie Blacktop Field and, they, and maybe a, a child wanted to go to the playground, they'd have to run into the road or into the driving uh, parking area. Um, so what we wanted to do is we wanted to unify those two parks a little bit better and put that playground in the middle so the children wouldn't have to run out into traffic uh, to play. They still have to cross Harrison, but usually when that's... Uh, when they're playing, that is when our, we're not getting the trucks into our treatment plant and when Peerless is no longer getting their delivery. So it shouldn't be an issue anymore, and it does really, really help with the layout. For you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Dave. Um, you talked about moving those two fields that was necessary so you'd have a, a lay-down area. Um, what happens after the project? It seemed that I remembered discussion of those moving because the vacated space would be integral to the ongoing operation of the treatment plan. Not true? Yes, sir, uh, through the chairman. So the original reason that we purchased the AMVETS was because we had no idea how big the footprint of the high rate treatment project would actually be. Um, so we thought that we might have to push the project outside the existing wastewater treatment plant fence line into Sprout Park. Um, through a lot of hard work from our consultants, they were able to keep the footprint of the, ex of the project we're working on now within the fence line. Um, but we do need to expand uh, one of our buildings out there in the northwest a little bit to the west, which is was onto the AMVETS property. So there is a small sliver of that field, that former AMVETS field that we do need for the project. But as far as the laydown area, one of the things that we're going back and forth with the parks department is whether we would keep that for future parking. We're talking about asking the contractor to possibly leave the fence in that they have around their uh, laydown yard, uh, maybe putting a couple gates on it and using it for parking because that's a huge concern out there. The other option is we just turn it back into field and uh, allow that it to be used that way. Like I've been saying for years, we still don't know what EPA requirements are going to come. They still want us to expand that 16 million gallon high rate treatment and add another 8 million and possibly even another 8 million. So it could be 15, 20 years down the road, but we may need that property eventually to put another high rate treatment system out there. So it's very important for the longevity of the wastewater treatment plant that we maintain flexibility with that property, but also in the meantime, we'd like to use it to kind of help the park system any way we can. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I think you answered uh, what my uh, follow-up question was going to be, but um, when you refer to the Amfest field, the Sprout field, they're both now city-owned properties. Mm -hmm. Uh, is there a reason to maintain a distinction just in terms of making it easier to know which field you're on, or is it now like really essentially one park with with a road in the middle of it, sort of like? I think to answer that, I'll probably have to uh, defer to Jason, um, but uh, I know we have not had that conversation about unifying the name. Um, but I don't know if there's been discussion. Um, I'm not sure if that was something that, um, there's naming rights for Sprout, so there's probably a reason that it's been called Sprout for this long, so we have not discussed anything as far as. I, I may be totally <clears throat> um, off base with this, but I associate Sprout with um, 
a prominent former member of the AMVETS, that that was kind of like an AMVETS field by another name, <clears throat> just thinking that, you know, the AMVETS thing, I get it, and Sproul, I think he was a big AMVET. Um, but beyond that, I just want to commend um, the city's forward thinking, absolutely, <laughs> to hold that property. I, you know, that, that would be a huge hurdle avoided when that subsequent, when the day comes when the EPA is going to require more, which it seems very likely it will, it'd be great to have that, that um, property already acquired. That being said, it's been a long time since uh, my kids played on those fields, but um, I can really see the benefit of having a better, safer designated parking area because the parking out there now is haphazard at best. It's on the lawn, pulling off the street, among guy wires and all kinds of stuff. I think that parking could really be made much safer for little kids getting in and out of cars and trying to get to their games. Yeah, and uh, through the chairman, kind of along those lines, uh, in addition to what we've done out there already that was included in the project, we did have $250,000 in 23 and $250,000 in 24 in our capital plan to do the other things that might come out of it. For example, buying the playground equipment, that's $200,000 itself. And then if uh, we're looking at trying to improve the parking where you're talking about um, and maybe even the score box and some other items like that, just to make sure that the amenities out there are brought up, knowing that you know we've been working really hard for the past eight, nine years on improving the amenities at all the parks, and that's one of them that we've been waiting to see where this high rate treatment project went. So that parking along the road is definitely a, a, an option of looking at as well. Just from an old person's standpoint, I know where Sproul Park is and I know where Amvets Park is. I don't want to be confused. <laughs> Just kidding, Dave. No, I, I yeah. can appreciate it's a, that. It's been that way for ever, ever since I was a kid, so. What else we get? Okay. All right. Any other questions? Uh, Shoreline Park. Yes. Uh, this one, Mr. Chairman, is... Uh, Something that obviously you guys have seen improvements out there along the shoreline on that western finger over the last couple of years. Uh, we've been systematically doing uh, limited concrete projects as funding is available. The, this year, one of the things that we bid in that park was uh, sidewalks. Um, we realized that even with that perimeter uh, kind of concrete boardwalk, walkway, sidewalk type area that's out there, um, we didn't really have good connectivity, especially ADA connectivity to the north end of the uh, park. So knowing that Warren Street's coming online later this year and East Water Street uh, we're going to be awarding soon, and we're going to have a node there where the Sandusky Bay Pathway and the bike path up Warren Street uh, are going to be connected by sometime next year. We wanted to make sure that we also had an avenue for pedestrians to get into the park and up to the, the water. So there is going to be uh, sidewalks added through that park. Obviously, we have a sprinkler system and other amenities within it. We're looking at ways that we can make sure that we accommodate uh, any of the other infrastructure. But routing it uh, from you know, that node that we're going to be putting up to the pavilion, up through the central, uh, I guess the middle, I don't know, this, I'll call it the central finger of the park and then connecting it to that sidewalk that kind of and, and bridges that go east west is what we're working on this summer so that project was bid and awarded and hopefully we'll get started on that soon okay. any questions where we are on that okay we move on east water street Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, East Water Street, I wanted to mention that we're finally at the point that we are bidding that project. That's one that we got awarded funding through the MPO three, four years ago. Um, that's redoing East Water from Franklin to Meg's. 
Uh, there's going to be a separated bike path on the north side, and we're going to try to blend in the landscaping from the elaborate landscaping on Shoreline Drive to a little bit less of landscaping on Megs. And we're going to be installing that separated bike path. Our, the project completion is actually May of next year, but I'm very hopeful that we can get this project completed within this construction season. We've been in a lot of conversations with the Yacht Club and Mac Iron about deliveries and everything else. Working through all those details, um, there are some features we're going to be adding, knowing that they get some pretty long uh, beds on their tractor trailers, making sure that we can uh, accommodate turning radii and things like that. So we are working with all of the property owners along that path and making sure that it also coincides with uh, anything uh, that is going to be happening at Battery Park. They're adjusting to, they're going to have to adjust to the node that we put at East Water and Megs um, and make sure that their design is adjusted accordingly. So. All right. Any questions on that project? Seeing none, we'll move on. Oh, Just real quick. The I'm just curious as what the design is going to be like, knowing coming in and out of the Yacht Club. Is is there going to be a, a sidewalk and then, how's that going to look? Right. Um, through the chairman, so the good thing about this project is that we are actually bumping the curb line, the north curb line, in to the south which means that the visibility, what we're doing, is trying to take the bike path and make it as visible as possible um, for anybody turning into and coming out of the Yacht Club. One of the issues that we have run into and through discussions with them is that a lot of the patrons don't necessarily take the appropriate exit and that the visibility is not very good because of all the bushes and landscaping along the fence line. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to limit that. What we're going to do is put up some safety features uh, as far as striping, some advanced warning on the path, but we're also putting stop signs up on the back side of the path for the Yacht Club. We're going to work with them to possibly try to get uh, even some stuff within the fence. We can't get inside the fence being an ODOT project. We can't get outside of the right of way, but we're going to try to work with them to improve the safety and visibility at that location. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Yeah, a, a, a prominent stop bar in addition to a stop sign is often helpful to get people to stop where they should because they, you know, we're creatures of habit and we find we don't have to stop over and over again and until we do and then we don't stop even when we should so yeah anything you can do to the cues like prominent maintained stop bars that get repainted once in a while are very helpful Agreed. or a speed bump And there's a lot. For, for the bikes? Com or for the bikes? No, coming out of the uh, parking lot. Well, there's, there's, that's right, not usually an issue because you're waiting for the gate to go up if you go out the proper exit. So you're not speeding out of that parking lot. Having done that numerous times over the period. So. Yeah, let's just wait. As soon as the gate goes it, up, it, you mow over, mow, mow over the bike. The, the. That's right. <laughs> Mr. Chairman? Yes. I. I deliberated about what's the most appropriate place to try to interject this maybe as other new business but it seems like it fits more closely with the other items than the event schedule if you can indulge me just a, a question sort of related tangentially related the Kiwanis Park and the parking dot I really appreciate how much time and effort and money the city's putting into to the recreation stuff and, and it Truly warms my heart, um, but it makes Kiwanis Field seem more and more of an orphan, and not the field so much. Um, I think Kiwanis Club likes to think that they take a little ownership. We have a cleanup scheduled there in conjunction with others um, this coming Saturday, I think. 
or the following Saturday, the 13th, whenever that is. <laughs> um, but the, the state of the of the asphalt or the holes, the, the parking there is really bad. Oh, I don't know if you noticed the permission forgiveness thing. Qantas went ahead and sprung for a new backstop padding at there. It looks very nice. Uh, we don't think anybody from the city will object, but we just read it and went ahead and did it. And uh, so hopefully you appreciate that. But but I think that field gets a lot of use and we're not really asking for anything in maintaining it. We've got new fencing. We put up the, the soft stuff on top of the outfield fence, new backstop, but we, we just don't have the wherewithal to do the paving. And anytime you have some extra on the back of the asphalt truck, there's lots of holes out there. That, um, uh, through the chairman, uh, two things on that. One, we are looking, one of the things we're considering is we have to pave our water treatment plant out there and to save money, it would be very uh, easy for us to piggyback that together. Um, that's over the next couple years we were looking at doing that. The other thing is, is in conversations annually with uh, the rec department and anybody else, through the capital planning process, I've pulled out 75000 annually to put towards parking lot paving throughout the city. That's how we've been able to do uh, the various downtown ones and park ones and things like that. So. We are aware, including fire stations and those types of things, but we are certainly aware that there are other parking lots, Mills Golf Course, the greenhouse, the service center, um, you know, that recycling area out at the service center, and Kiwanis is certainly one that's on our list of uh, systematically moving through that as well and trying to make sure that we get to it as timely as we possibly can. Um, this year, we're hoping to check some of those off the list because we also, also threw a little bit of stimulus, the ARPA money, at those as well. So hopefully we can move forward more quickly, and we'll certainly keep you up to date as soon as we can get that one on the capital plan. Thank you. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for those updates. All right. We'll move on to the event schedule then. Jason? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm here to answer any questions. I know Ohio Bike Week came up uh, at the last meeting, and we uh, the Bike Week for this year will start Memorial Day weekend, but you'll see the downtown party pretty similar to how it was last year with that first weekend in June, which would be June 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, uh, with most of the event using the Barrel House property, Shoreline Drive, in the Jackson Street Pier for the event footprint, and then parking for bikes will be on the streets to the south. So Water Street, Columbus Ave, uh, Mar uh, parts of Market, and then as the event gets bigger on Saturday, uh, we may extend that parking, which they did last year, all the way up to possibly Washington Street if, if you know the Mother Nature decides to get the best weather and we have that many bikes coming to town. If there's any other questions on events, well, I have, I, I'm the uh, internal calendar for our Parks and Rec Department, <laughs> and we are putting out our special events guide here in the next week or two. You'll see a printed version of that and online as well. Okay. David? Um, I don't know if I haven't really been paying that close of attention. Is there a plan to use the parking ramp downtown at any point? And, uh, I'm thinking really also about the disruption that in past years has actually closed the county building at the old LaSalle building because you, know, you couldn't get in and out of it. It sounds like with the focus <coughs> shifting farther to the north that maybe there isn't going to be the conflict for conducting county business there. And, and, uh, and now that we have tenants and stuff that depend on the parking ramp, you know, for their off-street parking? Sure. Uh, for this year, um, they are leaving the parking garage open for downtown merchant parking and for visit visitor parking. They've found that they don't have as many bikes using the parking garage during the event. So the parking garage will be open for um, downtown merchants, uh, people that are coming down to check out Bike Week. Um, 
so yeah, usually they kept that open until four o'clock on that Friday, so the um, employees, county and city employees, could could get out um, easily on Friday when the, when the event was happening. But this year, the parking garage will be available for parking. And, and the the main days of the event uh, are over the weekend, then, or is there like? event downtown during the work week, during the? Um, Thursday night will be the first night of the downtown block party, and then Friday afternoon, Friday night, Saturday afternoon, Saturday night. Okay, thanks. Okay. Tough to know. All right. Okay, anything else under events or any other questions on events? Uh, Mr. Chairman, David, um, just getting back in town and trying to catch up a little bit. The uh, event schedule for entertainment at the uh, Jackson Street Pier, those are the Lang Trust related things or is that, um, is there more entertainment going to be on the pier than that or is, what, what's that about? Sure, good timing on that question. We just released our party at the pier schedule of events yesterday with um, we, we start on June 20, I want to get this right, I believe it's June 29th is the first party at the pier. Uh, and then the Lang Trust events start on Juneteenth, which would be, you know, 10 days earlier than that, uh, with their their schedule is a, a show each month. I don't know if they've released the entire schedule, but there is a, a Lang Trust event each month with party at the pier starting on the 29th every Thursday through uh, the last Thursday in August. Oh, I can double check on that. Like I said, we have we just released that calendar or that, that schedule of events yesterday. So we've got uh, Iron Man is coming back again this year too, which will oh, be... I meant to ask about that. <laughs> I, I don't have those dates down yet. Do you need a sign-up sheet? Oh, uh, yeah. He does volunteer, yeah. The uh, uh, July 23rd, Sunday, July 23rd is the Ironman event. And they're still taking volunteers. I know they've had a, a very good turnout already, more than last year they're expecting. The relay has sold out. The uh, single athletes that are doing the, uh, the entire 70.3 will be they're hoping to reach 2,000 participants this year, which would be up from last year, second year of the event. I'd like to field a good team of Kiwanis volunteers. We need the money. <laughs> Much appreciated. All right. We're good. All right. Any other questions on events? We'll move on to old business then. Battery Park. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll mention the Battery Park PUD process uh, has moved forward another step. The City Commission passed the rezoning on April 24th at the regular scheduled meeting, and that included the preliminary plan that was recommended by Planning Commission, as those of you on Planning Commission are well aware. And the developer will have 18 months to bring the final development plan back to Planning Commission. So that'll be everything including the preliminary plus a lot more detailed uh, architectural information, information specifically of where exactly the public spaces would be and how they're gonna be maintained um, and some other conditions in that. So I don't expect them to take 18 months to do that, but um, they have, according to our ordinance, 18 months to bring that final development plan to Planning Commission. Is there any anticipation that they will be looking for input or getting public feedback before they present the final plan? I don't know that they're expecting to do any public meeting outreach. I can keep you updated if that is the case. Um, there w is expected as part of the overall development to be a series of different pieces that will come before city commission. So there's lots of time and attention that for public comment in our regularly scheduled public meetings like city commission and planning commission meetings. Um, but I don't know if there's other outreach outside of that plan by the developer. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mike. I, I think um, 
is an advisory body to the city commission, this body, if it came to a consensus <coughs> on a concern uh, or recommendation, I'm sure the city commission would uh, welcome hearing from us. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, mean, I was thinking, that it kind of ties in, my thinking was, I go back to the Chesapeake when we were involved in even vetting and listening to proposal, yeah, uh, and meeting the potential developers uh, and getting feedback to the city uh, commission on those. So uh, that is really a real major purpose of this body, so. Yeah, that, that worked pretty well, and I think that probably got us the public walkway uh, around the project that might not have happened. Uh, had we, uh, I think Mike Will was the project manager at the time before he came became city manager. He was city manager. He was. City. Well, but but he, he was initially hired as the project man, uh, a project specialist for that particular project, and then and then when that went well, he wound up being. But but he he did uh, facilitate a number, a large number, I think you know. Uh, intense meetings with this mm -hmm. body. Right. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay. Anything else on Battery Park? All right. Justice Center. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted this to stay on here in case you guys had any questions as we move into summer. I, I also want to make sure that everybody stays aware that the sailing club still has access through the water side of the Justice Center, through that back parking lot where the police park. That's going to stay open throughout the project. I just want to make sure that everybody knows that that is still open. Um, because the, those two parking lots that service the facility are not open. We wanted to make sure that that, that access point is still there off of Washington. Mr. Chairman. David. Uh, could you maybe just update us on the, on the progress of the renovation and, and where we are on the time schedule? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Um, the... We're still in phase one. Uh, if this rain ever lets up, you'll see some more work going on on the exterior of the building. They have some panels they're looking to put up, um, and they've already done a lot of the grout sealing and things like that. We anticipate moving to phase two around August, September timeframe, which would be transitioning the police and court into the first phase and then renovating the second phase still on schedule to complete the project uh, middle of next year. Traffic flow will be the same as it is now through the summer basically then, or through the whole course of the project until it's... Yes, uh, through the chairman, we plan to maintain the, the traffic flow for uh, access to Battery Park and the yacht cl or the sailing club. Um, through that area until they come to install the fenced in area for the secured parking. My hope and my goal is to make sure that the contractor has relinquished the area that they're currently using for staging, which is the old parking lot by the tennis courts, and then we can switch that over at that time. So we're gonna try to coordinate that. I understand too that maybe next winter that's not as needed as much, but I don't anticipate that fencing going in uh, around that secured parking uh, until at least after the summer and after the sailing season. And then in the final configuration, um, the driveway that some people leaving the sailing club or whatever would exit um, to the east of the of the Justice Center and hit uh, Washington Street is that when, when the when the uh, secured parking lot is in that exit path is no longer there once you can exit through what's now the staging area 
Right, that will no longer be there, but we are keeping, you can still go that way in that parking lot that is there by the tennis Eight courts hours. will be open, so that will be an access point. But there's a little parking lot back by the skate park now. Is that still going to be there, but you won't be able to get onto Washington Street from that? Yes, and I think that uh, with the planning department, when we proceed with the uh, all wheels park, that's going to be part of the discussion about exactly how best to access that parking and where the most appropriate place is. Um, you know, that, that parking lot by the tennis courts is going to be uh, not used as much um, with the Justice Center and without the administration. So we also have that location that will be available. So there is some flexibility that we have with both of those. Um, and, and with the Justice Center property, we also left the opportunity to have access off of the far eastern end of Washington to make a connection around the fenced-in area of the Justice Center, if needed. All right, cool, thanks. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Any other questions on Justice Center? If not, Causeway Wetlands. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. This one is we're still not in the design of the phase two. I was hoping we would be, but we're still working through the scope of services of the second phase. But on a good note, phase one did receive a State of Ohio Engineering Excellence Award. It was recognized at the ACEC event, and we just found out about a month ago that it also received a national award for design and uh, uniqueness. I don't plan to travel to Washington, D.C. to accept that one, but uh, the consultant will be doing that on, uh, they put in, you know, most of the brain cells into that project. Um, so uh, it's, it's the first time I've been involved with a project that's received a, a state and national award, so it's pretty exciting. It's pretty uh, unique for, for me anyway. Here. Any questions? All right. Excellent. U.S. Uh, EPA Brownfield Assessment Grant update. Ms. Gilson was not able to attend today, but she did send us an update to give you. The uh, Both consultants for the Brownfields have or are in the process of developing the required quality assurance project plan for submittal, review, and approval by the U.S. EPA. Once that's approved, we'll move into the next phase of the program, which includes site identification and planning and assessment. Okay, Dave. I'm, I'm kind of drawing a blank of you say site assessment or site identification, is that the word you use? Do we know what all is included in? No, we don't know we what know those sites the, are yet. We know some of the key places, right, that we'll be looking at or what the suspected brownfields are? Like, I think there's general knowledge of suspected brownfields citywide, but not what we will focus on in this just project. Just wait and stay tuned, is that what I'm getting? That's the extent of knowledge I have on the all project. Right. Right. Sounds nebulous to me. <laughs> <laughs> it has, we don't know what the grant total is, or, or do we know the grant total? We just don't know how we're allocating those dollars. Is that what the, where we're at? Yes, it's 400000 It used to be that they would uh, split it between um, just regular environmental, and then a portion was set up for petroleum. Um, what it was called has and uh, the petroleum, but they combined everything because everybody was using them for both anyway. So, being that it has all been combined, um, we have the ability to move forward. Now, that's four hundred thousand total, but not all of it is going to the consultants. There's some of it held back for the city. I don't know the exact breakdown, but if we need to do any administrative stuff, paperwork, things like that, there is a portion set up for that and for training for city. Okay, thank you, David. Coltar is considered petroleana. 
I mean, it's the, I, I, you were saying that there's no longer a distinction between what is oil-based and... Just as far as the grant dollars are concerned, they used to separate them. Now you can use that full pot of money for either one instead of saying, well, I have to use this only for Petro or this only for Has. You can use the full pot for no, anything. And is coal tar Petro or not? Uh, yes, it would be considered petroleum related, a petroleum based substance. I mean, there's future grants. This one's probably not going to go away real quick. Okay. Any other questions regarding the brownfields? Any other business that anyone has we haven't covered under? The agenda items. Any public comment? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Hi, uh, Lisa Mazuka, um, 814 Barchar Road. I apologize for my late arrival. I was listening to the live stream, so I wasn't missing anything, but um, thank you for that. Um, I just was asked to be here today to make a comment about the bicentennial plan. Um, and just about the Battery Park PUD um, and hopes that you guys might consider looking, re-looking at the Bicentennial Plan and seeing if there's anything there that can be brought back into the current plans. So, thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. Is there any other? Comment or go to the order. If not, we'll accept a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. We are adjourned.